Hi, I'm Debbie Montgomery Johnson, your host of Stand Up and Speak Up, a show that is about each and every one of us. Many of us have something, something we're hiding, something we're ashamed of, something that through no fault of our own or through our own making, we keep hidden, and that in turn keeps us hidden from each other and the world. Good people go through terrible situations. Wise people know when and how to let it go. Everything that happens to us helps us grow. And while it may be hard to see it right away, the most important thing to do is to change your perception about your circumstances. Stand Up and Speak Up features ordinary people just like you and me who've been through extraordinary times and then found the courage to step out from behind their smiles and speak up about their experiences and the lessons gleaned from them. We are dedicated to encouraging you to remove the mask of embarrassment, shame, and possibly guilt, and to get back to being your best self. Today, we have a very special guest. She's a good friend of mine. We've met years ago through a crisis time that we were doing on our own, actually. And I want to introduce to you my friend from up in New York, Long Island, Miss Linda Vostek, the crisis planner. Good morning, Linda. Good morning, Debbie. It's a thrill to be here today. (laughs) Well, this is so much fun because it's really interesting. You and I usually meet like uh, never in our hometowns. We're always somewhere around the world. Um, And when we get together, it's like we're old friends that have, you know, saw each other yesterday. So I'm so glad you can be my guest today and you're self-contained or social distanced, whatever, up on Long Island and I'm down in Florida and... uh, Just welcome, welcome. I'm so glad because this is really an important topic during this pandemic is that you're planning for a crisis. And uh, sometimes like this pandemic, we didn't have really any opportunity to to prepare much. Um, And then I started thinking about you when this happened going, if only people would listen to what we've been saying all these years, you know, with their food (laughs) and their toilet paper and all that. So we're going to get into that. But I want to tell everybody who you are before we start. Because Linda has come a really long way since I've met her. I don't remember how many years ago, Linda, probably six, maybe six, six, seven, eight. Yeah, Um, six years. But Linda is an international speaker and author of multiple books and a consultant on a mission to empower others to get off the worry go round and become their own master of disaster. Linda knows firsthand how preparation and planning allows companies and individuals to navigate through and thrive when blindsided by life. Linda brings her expertise, kind heart, and compassion together, guiding others through planning for the inevitable disasters, be they personal or natural. Inspired by her late father, Linda carries on his legacy through her recent book, And Now What? And I love this one, Shit Happens. So, Linda is the co-leader of two chapters of Women's Prosperity Network, an organization that she and I are both members of, and she's a certified speaker and member of the One Philosophy Founder Circle. Wow, 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 Ms. Linda, that is a lot of accomplishments, and I'm so proud of you for where you've gotten to. Um, So let's go back a little bit. Let's go back to a few years ago when you and I first met. Can you kind of tell everybody where were we and what were we doing? Well, you know, we we met several times, and uh, initially we met at an event that Sharon Lecter, who was the co-author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad, had in uh, Arizona. And uh, you were talking about your business, which was your uh, diabetes neuropathy supplement, and I was talking about my newly published book, Shit Happens. And... Neither one of us really knew what we were doing, and that was our first meeting. But then we we kept running into each other at other events, which was absolutely amazing. And ultimately, we came together at an, an event called um, Awakening Giants. And it really brought together 20 amazing women from all over the world. And I was uh, so surprised to be selected to be one of those women. And it was a challenge that challenged us in so many ways, physically, emotionally, spiritually, and in our business sense. And you and I really, I think, uh, that's where we really, really bonded. (laughs) 
We did. I remember though when we were in Arizona, um, I had my my Lou had passed away, and the company name was Benfotiamine.net. And I remember standing up in the kind of the power session that we had in front of business entrepreneurs, judges basically, kind of like Shark Tank. And they're like, what's the name of that company? You've got to change the name of that company. And I'm thinking, I can't change the name of that company. That was Lou's company, and I have to keep that legacy. And then over time, I have gone and changed the company to Benfo Complete, which is a little bit easier to remember. But I remember I had that moment, and then they're talking to you, and you're telling them that you can't put your book in, in the bookstore because of the title. Right? right? Remember that Barnes right. & Noble, Barnes <laughs> Noble wouldn't let you put it because you can't have shit happens even though it's everywhere. Um, so that was kind of funny how we got through that. And then I remember um, the only other, well, the one other thing I really remember about Sharon's was standing in her living room and I was kind of up away from everybody. I just tried to observe. And that's the first time I ever said something about I was going to start talking about the woman behind the smile one day and telling the story. Well, and I remember you telling me that in uh, that was actually the second Sharon event, I believe, because I remember you sharing that with me in the room that we were sharing because we shared the hotel room on our second event. And it was like, I'm like, yes, you have to get that message out because it's, you know, all it takes is once you share something that's been a, a burden, you know, that it kind of, and people hear what your message is, they're like, yes, we need to hear that. So I I know and you inspired me that day, and I said, oh, my goodness, this woman is going to change the world. <laughs> well, I appreciate that because it, I, I was able to do it because of our, well, when we were at Women's Prosperity Network in the speakers training, and I had a support group. I had the women there that gave me the courage to speak up. And that happened to you. I remember you and I were on a call one time, and, and your, your, um, your hubby, Stan, had been very ill and right. was in the process of passing. He was, well, you can explain it. I want you to tell that, but tell, I remember that, the phone call that I was on, and you were just beside yourself because of the hospital and the, the lack of support you were getting. And you had well, the, girl, the girls on the phone. Can you kind of tell folks what happened there? I know that's tough, and Stan has passed away, and I'm, I'm sorry for that. And it kind of threw us into another group, you know, the Widows Club, which we both hate that name. But it was another bonding experience for us. But kind of explain yeah. how you got through that period, because you certainly I hadn't think, planned on him. I think that in, in my case with Stan, I had been his caregiver for eight years, and for most of that time, everyone around me, because I was out uh, doing networking, I was working on my business, everybody that I was associating with, the only time that they would know something was going on is if he was in the hospital and I would mention that he was in the hospital for something. But they had no idea how gravely ill he was. I mean, he, would, he had gone into kidney failure. We were doing home hemodialysis. I was, you know, I I was his caregiver. And at the same time, knowing how gravely ill he was, I knew I had to also be doing something for my future. So I put on a happy face. I was the woman behind the smile outside. Nobody had a clue what was going on behind my doors. And that day on that call with, with our mastermind group, it, I finally, I think, had admitted that he was going to die. And up until that point, I had not accepted that. I was in total denial that he was actually going to leave me, <laughs> you know. And coming to that realization and just releasing all that pent-up uh, energy on that call was just, um, it was so cathartic. It really allowed me to receive because so many of us are givers, we give all the time, and we don't know how to receive grace, gracefully when somebody is there for you. And I had not asked for help, and and yet everybody on that call was there for me in that moment, especially you, Deb. I mean, I think because you could relate in some way, although 
these deaths were very different in that your husband died very unexpectedly. Mine was like a slow collapsing lawn chair watching that happen. But once you realize that there are people out there that are there to support you and to be there for you, it makes such a difference. And for me, that, that was a, like a real turning point in my life. And I knew that, you know, once he did pass, I had a mission to make life better for other people. While my business had been crisis planning, my commitment to it really became cemented, having gone through everything I went through with Stan, because truly what, what happened in that moment was I, I was prepared. We were totally prepared for his death. And I didn't have any of the anxiety and stress and problems that one would anticipate from not, you know, if you're not prepared, I didn't have the chaos that followed. I knew exactly what to do. He had shared with me exactly what he wanted for his funeral. He had all the arrangements done. We had everything in place financially. I had every, I knew exactly what was going on. And the peace of mind that that gave me it allowed me to get off the worry go around and, and really stay off. And I and that's really I think one of the things that I think was so special about just that particular moment in time. Well and I remember it was just the uh, I think we were probably frustrated because, you know, I'm in Florida, Europe and New York and there was nothing that we could physically do for you. Um, but again it was the it was the great support of the sisters in our group. And then you have had great support of, of your friends and, and the women up there in, in Long Island that could go in and, you know, be there to hold you up, which we all need when, when someone passes away like that. Um, what I really loved about your stuff, and you said this was, um, it was the leg of your dad's legacy, which is interesting because my dad's on the call, and he and I have done years and years and years of family history, and we talk about preparation all the time. And, and so I loved how your, your dad started this mission. Can you kind of tell everybody what your dad did and how you have made it into a business? Well, when my dad turned 70, which just tells you that, you know, for anybody who's concerned right now about what's going to happen to your job when this coronavirus thing is over, you know, your life isn't over and things happen. I mean, I, I was retired. At, I was invited to retire at the age of 60 and I started this business after that. So, our creative juices don't stop and our experience really builds upon, I mean, that's where we create amazing things. So my father at 70 saw so many of his friends losing a spouse and the one that was left being thrown into total chaos. And, you know, the husband had never run the washing machine, the wife had never written a check, uh, nobody knew what to do in the house and, and the kids would swoop in from all over the country and in many cases they pick up mom or dad and move them someplace they'd never lived before and and six months later the parent was sitting there going uh, what happened this wasn't my plan well he decided that they needed a home operations manual to understand what to do in the house and to keep things under control and he as part of this thing, he organized all the paperwork. Well, you know, my dad was an engineer, and you know, which is why solutions came to him, and this was his solution. So it was written like an engineer, and it looked like something an engineer put together. And he had no idea how to market it or what to do with it, so it sat on a shelf for 23 years. And I was at an event with Kevin Harrington, and somebody asked Kevin, who actually, if any. For you, those of you who don't know who he is, he was one of the original sharks on Shark Tank, and he um, actually invented the info commercial with the Ginsu knife, and he owns a brand called As Seen on TV. That's not just a label they stick on things, that's a brand. And he, someone said, well, you get presented 20,000 products a year, how do you pick the 20 to 30 you actually put your name on? And what he said just hit me so profoundly. He said if he saw something that filled a need, he felt compelled to bring it to the marketplace. And I, it was like a light bulb moment, and I thought of my father's thing, and I said, you know, the time is now. Us baby boomers need this information now. We're dealing with our aging parents. Our children are growing up and moving out on their own. We're facing our own mortality. 
that was the time to bring this forward. And so that started me on the journey as the crisis planner. Well, and your, your box, the ice box, is phenomenal. I mean, years and years ago, I had a, a three-ring binder called Answers. And that's, I think, why you and I were, had this connection initially is because I'm the same way you are. I like to have stuff organized. I like to know where, where the wills are, where the insurance plans are, where all those things are. And that really gave me great comfort when Lou died um, that I knew what he wanted. I knew where the things were. And the only thing I was miffed about is that he canceled our insurance policy prior to him dying. But... <laughs> That's one thing. What this does is it jump starts the conversation that our generation needs to have with our parents and with our children so that they're not left behind in knowing what is important, you know, to do for us. So can you just kind of describe your little it's, – it's not a manual anymore. You've got a whole program that you right. have in place. Well, you know, it's really funny. I think this um – COVID-19 pandemic that truly blindsided everybody has really put planning a little bit more in the forefront and made people more aware of just how unprepared we are for things. And with this home system, it's the crisis planner home system is what's it, what it's called. It actually has three books that are dedicated to organizing things in your home. Because think about it, when you buy a car, you get an owner's manual for the car that's like an inch and a half thick now, I mean, with all the stuff that's going on in your car, right? But when you live in a house or buy a house, there's no instruction. It doesn't come with an instruction manual. So the first book is an instruction manual for your house. Then the second book actually helps you know what you have so that you actually walk around each room, look around. What are the walls made of? What's on the floor? What condition is it in? How many outlets in the room? Where's the circuit breakers? So that you can actually understand what needs to be repaired, what needs to be replaced, how, you know, whether it needs to be just thrown away. Um, And you'd go through each part of the home, inside and out, and really look at what you have, because most of us have no clue. And then the third book is a book that organizes, records all the um, improvements you make on your home, which you will need for tax purposes when when you decide to sell your home. (coughs) Excuse me. The, the, The second half of that book is your home inventory. Anybody who's ever had a disaster in their home, whether it be a flood or a storm or, or, or something that has destroyed your home, a tornado or hurricane damage, you know, and you have co- contents coverage. Well, if you don't have a list of the contents documented, the insurance company is going to say, okay, I'll give you 10000 for the kitchen, I'll give you 5000 for the living room, and, and your kitchen could have been 50000 you know, with all the fancy stuff you've got in there. But unless you have it documented, the insurance company is going to quibble over it and, da- and lowball you. So having that documentation. Then the second, the last two books are your personal planning. That's going through the eight steps of creating your personal plan, your legal, your financial, your tax planning, your insurance planning, your, um, your funeral planning, your protections like your ID protection and your computer backup protections and, and, your, and your home kit, you know, your disaster kit, your emergency kit. So it takes you through all of those things, your banking information, and then it helps you document all your health information and you have ev- all records of everything. So those are just the books, but then it comes with a whole toolkit that is like circuit breaker labels and labels for your gas and water shut off. I can tell you, I'm so grateful I had my gas shut off labeled because on St. Patty's Day, I literally had an issue with my gas cooktop. I had three burners going and I went to turn the burner off in the back and it wouldn't go off. The gas was still burning and it was still coming out and it wouldn't go off. If I didn't know how to turn the gas off to the stove, I would have not only lost my cooktop, but, you know, I would have had to turn off the cooktop and, and I would have lost my hot water and my dryer as well, but because I had it labeled, it made it so much easier. And uh, so that, you know, having those kind of labels help. 
It also comes with water leak detectors, which the other day I turned on the outside water faucet, <laughs> you know, and there was a pinhole in the pipe in the basement, and I didn't know. And uh, all of a sudden, this water leak detector went off that I had next to the washing machine because an eight, a sixteenth of an inch of water had gotten into the water leak detector. So before I had a massive flood, I was under control. So it comes with those as well. It comes with a flash drive to put pictures of everything you own as well as your a ruler to put in perspective because an insurance adjuster is not going to know if it's an eight-foot couch or a six-foot couch unless you have a ruler in the picture. Um, and it comes with a roadmap for planning, uh, your, uh, a password book to write down your passwords. It's one thing to have a digital password keeper on your computer. But it's also important to have it backed up with a written password book. Um, and a, um, it also has a um, camera cover for your computer so that you can literally slide it open when you want the camera to be used and not. So, and, and then a bunch of other things in there. And it comes in a watertight box with file pockets to organize all your stuff. So that's what my father's home planning system, his open run, uh, home operation manual actually evolved into an entire system that makes sense and takes you through step by step all the things that you need to put together to have a plan. Well, it is incredibly comprehensive and, and I've got one right here that I I mean I've got your password passport, the little book. It's literally yeah. right beside my phone right here. I use it all the time. I use it when I travel cuz you know, we all have to change our passwords all the time. Now, the one thing I want to do say about that is be careful where you keep it. Because I have right. heard of people that you know get re- involved in in some sort of relationship, and someone is in the home, and then the next thing they know, they found out that their accounts have been wiped out because someone did get access to their passwords. So again, it's it's common sense and be careful of, of your privacy. But it the book is invaluable, and just the, the you know the the water leak. I live in a in a home that one of my best friends bought the home right beside me and it's very similar to mine and she was in within two weeks of moving there, she was sitting on the back patio and something fell over and, and nicked the uh, the water faucet, the water line out there. And it started to spew out. The water is spewing out and she's she had no idea how to turn the water off. So what does she do? She runs to me. How do I turn the water off in my house? And I'm thinking, thank goodness my house is almost identical to yours. I knew exactly where to go because I'd had to turn it right. off one time. We went right to the outdoor switch and turned it off. Um, but that's something that she's newly separated from her husband. She never did that stuff before. And right. I'm like, okay, madam, now is the time for you to figure out what is in your home. Where's your air conditioner turn off? So where, you know, how do you, how do you change the uh, the the filters? Those things that we don't really think about until it's too late or it's cost us a ton of money because now, you know, you've got to change your air conditioner out because you didn't change the filter and it blew your air conditioner. So right. there's so much in your, in, your, in your process that, you know, for me personally, um, it just really got me ultra prepared. And, and, and I'm a pretty much preparedness queen. Um, but just the, you know, we've talked about the physical stuff versus, you know, millennials and a lot of people like to have a digital form. Explain why we need to have the physical form in many, many times. Well, you know, the physical form is your documentation. Um, digital things can be altered. Um, if you have, is someone mowing your grass? I know, they're, 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 they've Wouldn't got the know? blower in that it'll be gone in two seconds, but I'm like, okay. why is she coming now? I don't know. <laughs> See, I'm the like crisis, you can't plan for quiet. that. <laughs> you know, well, you know, that's one of the things I don't do. I don't take care of my own grass. I have somebody do that for me because I, I know it's better, uh, a better spend of my time and effort. There you go. Uh, Just got to speak um, up you know, a little bit. Of course, the, the timing on this is not the best. <laughs> Oh my goodness. That's when crises happen. When your crises happen, know, when you're not expecting you know, them. You can't so anyway, plan on this. We were talking about the physical, especially. I live in Florida, and hurricane season's coming up. Why do we need to have the physical papers available? Well, you know, the way I look at it, everybody needs to have three sets of their important documents at least. You need to have a physical set of documents because those can't be altered. Those are your real documents that that what you have is what you have. 
So you need to protect them in either waterproof or fire, uh, fire resistant safe, something that is mobile that you can pick up and move. Like I know frequently with hurricane season, you get asked to evacuate, especially if you live close to the coast. Um, you want to be able to grab and go everything. So everything should be in one place that you can grab and go watertight. You know, I mean, many of us keep our documents in, in offices in our basements or places where they can get wet. So you want to make sure that they're secure. You also want to have digital versions. And you want to have a flash drive version that you can put in a safe deposit box or to give to a trusted family member. And you also want to have a set of documents in the cloud. Now, my philosophy on that has to do with if your home is destroyed and you lose your physical documents, you still have your, your, your flash drive documents and your cloud documents. If your community is destroyed and the flash drives are gone and your, your physical documents are down, you still have the, the cloud documents. If all three are gone, I think we have a much bigger problem than my little problem. So, you know, it's, it's always about backing up, thinking about what if, what if, what if, <laughs> you know? And so that's, you know, when I tell people to create their document storage, I do talk about both digital and physical. But I know I just had a transaction where I had um, some, uh, a real estate transaction in Florida, and they required everything to be physical papers. So they wouldn't accept um, scan documents. They had to be physical documents that had to be sent in the mail. So there are still places that require those physical documents, and if you don't have them, it it's really uh, makes it more difficult on yourself on you. So you know there are certain things that they won't accept online. I mean, especially now, everybody's got to go for their enhanced driver's licenses, right? They've got to get those little stars on their licenses. Well, the documentation, especially for a woman, can be a lot more tricky because we've changed our names. We've been married. I, I, I was married, then divorced, and then married again. My name changed so many times. I had to bring all of those documents with me, my divorce decree, you know, my marriage licenses, my divorce decrees, my you know, everything to prove who I was, right. even though I had a even though I had a passport, you know, which actually blew my mind. Um, so the the things that you need physically, you still need physically and you can't dismiss that as something that Oh, well, everything's digital now. Well, everything isn't digital, and they're not accepting digital things. I mean, you and I know when we just went to India what we had to go through to just get the visa for India. Right. <laughs> right. And, you know, I, I make copies. Like uh, Years ago, my, when my mother-in-law was living with us, I remember she uh, lost her purse. And to recreate what was in her purse was just a goat rope. It was a crisis. And from mm -hmm. that point on, I actually make copies of, I, you know, I'll put them in my copy machine of my, my license, my credit cards, my everything, uh, and all the information, the 800 numbers to call in case something gets lost. And I have them in my answers book, which is in my icebox. You know, not physical icebox, although that makes me laugh because years ago we used to store things in our freezer because that is well, actually and fireproof. Well, I think that's part of where it came from. You know, they yeah. say you should... You, you actually should have a list of your medications and, and um, conditions in an envelope taped to the outside of your refrigerator because EMS will look there if they come into your home and you're unconscious and they don't know it and there's nobody there to help you. If you have a list of your medications and if you are diabetic or if you have heart disease or whatever and you have that in an envelope, and with the important context, that's exactly where they look, right? And they, you know, the refrigerator, which used to be called an icebox. Exactly. <clears throat> and that's important. I, I, I don't take any medications. Fortunately, I usually take just vitamins. But my husband takes medicine, and I don't have any idea what he takes. So I carry a copy of his medicine and his doctor's names in my wallet. And I also have a copy yeah. in my book in case something happens. So it's just a matter of, of thinking about what if, the what ifs. And for me, that gives me great 
the control basically of the, yeah. of the things that I can control. Um, and then you never know. I've, I've worked with my folks on this. Is you know where are your where are your documents? Where are your doctor's list? Where are your passwords? Where are those things? Because in the event something happens to them, and they're on the phone today, I'm really glad they're here. Um, my brothers who don't live nearby are counting on me to say, okay, if something happens to mom and dad, do you know where stuff is? And I'm thinking, oh yeah, 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 sure I do. And then I'm thinking, maybe I don't. So I'm glad they're on because we will well, have, we and- will have this conversation again. But it's, it happens. Yes, it does. And, you know, when you have a plan, when you've created a plan, you can really recover from a disaster quicker. You can avoid family conflicts, which are so prevalent when there is no plan. And you can control the chaos, which it, there's going to be enough chaos in a disaster. You don't need to have it exacerbated by, by not knowing what to do. Because if you don't have a plan, you also you have fewer options, and you tend to make bad decisions in the middle of a disaster. You know, that, well, that's you, the and worst I, part. you and I have been in this situation, and mine a little bit different because Lou died suddenly. But I had to make plans to, you know, have a service and have a burial and get the funeral home and all this. And and at the moment, your brain is not focused on that, and that's where oh. you know, but pre-planning those things, doing some sort of pre-planned um, burial spot or you know ours was with the VA but um, having I had friends that came in who had recently gone through losing a one lost a brother one lost a parent and they actually call, made calls for me and I had to make the, the final decisions but thank goodness I had friends there that could help me along with my answers book walk through the process because you don't realize that someone passing away could cost $500 or cost $50,000 you know, and you're just saying, do it, do it, you know, and we're like, oh, no, and then I'm thinking, oh, my gosh, Lou wouldn't want me to have spent, you know, that much money on something. So you you need to have the planning in advance, um, and your system is so well thought out, Linda, and so step by step. Um, are there four steps? I think we talked about something about um, yeah, you, you have four steps to creating your plan. Yeah, there's four really simple steps. First thing is to figure out what you have. So – you might be surprised how much you actually have, but it, it's about that process of pulling it together. So what you have, then filling in the missing pieces, and then creating some sort of a system, a filing system that you organize everything, you know, and in some sort of an ice box, answer book, whatever you call it, you know, you're going to put it all together. And then finally, communicating where to find the information to the people that need to know. They don't need to know exactly what's in your plan it, unless it happens to be your long-term care insurance. That might be a good thing to tell people that you have. But otherwise, they don't need to know what is exactly there. They just need to know where it is when they need it. And You, have, you, know, you so told for, me a story once about <sighs> a long-term care and a friend of yours, father passed yeah. away. Yeah, that long-term care insurance is something that's really critical for people to know. Um, a... Um, a man with Alzheimer's, his family had spent all his money taking care of him at home as much as they could, you know, with help at home. And finally, he had deteriorated to the point of going into a nursing home. And when he went into the nursing home, of course, he had to go on Medicaid because at this point he had no more money. And Medicaid, they signed the house over to Medicaid to pay for his nursing home bill, which was $15,000 a month here in New York. And, uh, you know, he died a couple months later, and now Medicaid makes you sell the house. You don't have to sell the house until the person actually dies, which, uh, because there's this, this premise that the person could, at some point, maybe leave the nursing home and go home. You know, In this case, they knew that was not going to happen, but that Medicaid at least doesn't make you sell it until that time. So now they're cleaning out the house, and they found, tucked in a drawer, uh, neatly protected his long-term care policy that nobody knew about. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that would have not only saved the house, but all the money they spent for his care all those years. So (coughs) it really, that communication piece is so, so important because it can be heartbreaking if you don't know what you're looking for. It's like sending people on a scavenger hunt without a list. (laughs) Right. And, And I find, too, that... It's the conversation. It's it's starting that conversation that is a little uncomfortable for many of us. Um, 
because we don't want to talk about somebody dying. I mean, it's inevitable. It's like taxes and, and death, are, they're going to happen. But it's talking about it, and, and you don't want to – got to step lightly. But sometimes you just got to be bold and just say, hey, let's just get this out in the open. I did this with my, with my father-in-law. I said, let's get this out in the open. Let's put it in writing so that you don't have to talk about it anymore because I know it makes you feel uncomfortable. But I said, I've already been through this once, so let's just do this. And then when he ended up passing on – I, I had everything there, and I took it to, to CJ's you know, siblings and said, this is what your dad wanted. This is what he told me. And they were so grateful that it was written down because they were all fighting amongst themselves. You know, because well, nobody knew course, what dad that's wanted. that's what happens. Exactly. That's what happens. If you don't tell them what you want, and no parent wants their child, children to be fighting. No. <laughs> you know, that, that's the bottom line. Uh, no parent wants their children to be fighting over you know, what, what to be done. And, you know, so by telling them what you want, that is the greatest gift you can give to the people that you love the most. So in your, in your life, Linda, what has given you the greatest control? What do you think, personally? The thing that has always given me the greatest control is that I know that I am pre- as prepared as I can be for whatever life is going to dish out to me. I have done the work. I have the things in place that are going to protect me and my, you know, protect me right now because that's all I am. Uh, But, and, and to make sure that I am safe and secure in my home that I don't have, uh, I don't worry. I mean, I guess that's it. The plan get you off the worry around and keeps you off. And it's just a matter of updating things as things change, as new babies are born or as people pass away, just changing, uh, adding names or taking names away. Um, it, it's literally just a maintenance and then constantly looking at, okay, what else do I need to add to this? What else is going to keep me safe? Um, like I said, COVID-19 has been a wake up call for so many people and for over a hundred thousand people that never expected to be gone are gone and what their families are going through in terms of they can't they can't grieve properly and they can't have the funerals that they want to have and they can't have the serve you know and you know even through this i've i've lost two friends to COVID 19 but i've lost six friends to non-covid situations that they were ill, they had things going on, and they passed because it was their time, but their families can't grieve either. Mm-hmm. So this has been a real monkey wrench into anybody's plans, and especially if they weren't prepared for them to go. Uh, it, it truly has been a challenge for so many people, and I don't want people to have that pain exacerbate, exacerbated any more than it has to be. I mean, there's always pain in a loss, and... Certainly, it was tremendous pain when my husband passed, but there was also tremendous peace in knowing that I was going to be okay. Mm-hmm. And honestly, the silver lining of being staying at home is that you have time now to prioritize getting your papers in order. We're, we're right. sitting here. They're, they're around us. Now it's just gathering those together because I know I've ta- my kids are in the military and they travel a lot and, and they needed to know that if something happens to me, the stuff is together. You know, they, I don't need them running around the house trying to find things. I don't want them to have no. to go through that. No. And uh, it, it's, <clears throat> it gives me peace of mind. It gives them peace of mind. And it, it's really, really an important thing. So we're going to open up this. I mean, I, we have some folks on the on the list here that I think want to come in and ask questions. And, it, and I'm going to turn this over to question and answer. And if nobody wants to come in, that's fine too, because Lynn and I can certainly chat. Um, <laughs> if you would like to ask Linda a question, just hit star six, and it'll put you in our queue, and we'll bring you on as we can. Um, but in the meantime, I'm, I, I love the system, Linda, because it's the control. It's just for me, it's the control of knowing where my stuff is. And for the hardest part, I think, is the upkeep. Like you said, look it over and update it, update names on, on retirement accounts or 401K or anything where you have a beneficiary. Uh, make sure that you update that. 
bank account right. to make sure that you've got someone else on the account, either as a beneficiary or a joint owner, because that's a whole other issue. If, exactly. If you, you know, if you have problems. Um, credit card information. I was talking to my folks the other day. We had to call about something on their credit card, and the credit card company wouldn't talk to me because I wasn't listed. And so by the end of that phone call, I, we had me put on listed. I don't need access to the card. I just need to have access to speaking to them in the event something happens to my mom and dad or to their card. You know, so I want right. to facilitate that, which I think many of us are in that position now of being the baby boomers with older parents. We've got to be able to speak for our parents if they need our help. Exactly. And I mean, and, and you know, even with the legal documents, a couple of things that are, are so important to know is that a power of attorney, if you have a power of attorney for a parent, that power of attorney dies with them. Right. So you may have access while they're alive to their banking accounts, but unless you unless they have a paper that says that you have access after their death, you will that power of attorney dies with them. So that is something that will throw a lot of people for a loop because they don't expect that. The other thing is if you've got children over the age of 18 that are, are not married and on their own yet, um, they need to have some advanced directive documents in place because if they have a car accident and are unconscious and you as their parent without those advanced directives have no legal rights to make any medical decisions for them. So they need to have that living will and the, um, the uh, other one is the, um, oh goodness. There's the health care <laughs> proxy. Yeah. Health care proxy and the living will need to be yep. in place because that will tell the medical people that you have authority to make medical decisions if your child cannot. And once they become an adult, you have no rights to do that at all. And that comes up in play when they're in college or when they're traveling. Um, it can be very scary for a parent to be told that you can't help your child. <laughs> That's happened to me, and I actually had ended up getting power of attorneys, general power of attorneys for the kids <coughs> before they got married. Um, but it, it is important because I, I had that feeling like you won't, you won't even call me, you know, if he's over 18, you won't, um, where do I stand here? And they're like, well, unless he gives, and even today, you know, my youngest is not married and to go to a doctor's office, he has to expressly give them permission to talk to me in the event right. something happens. And, and right. parents need to know that because we're not thinking, we're thinking, yeah, everybody's on their own, but it's really, really important. Um, so and they, and things happen. Things happen, you know. And and you're exactly. like, how did that happen? I mean, <laughs> it's like, you know. And and those kind of blind sides can just send everybody into like a complete chaos situation. It's, it's the unknown. It's because usually those things are it's, they're putting us in a place that we've never been before, and it it can be very frightening if you don't if you haven't planned for it. And I mean, there are going to be times in our life where we're not going to have the answers, and we're not going to have the plan for it. But at least we've got the things we can plan are planned, and that takes that worry out of. I love get off the worry go around. It takes the worry out of our lives, and uh, yes, which is wonderful. We don't have that worry is wasted energy. Oh, absolutely, because there's only two things we worry about. We worry about things we can't control, in which case that's wasted energy completely, or you worry about things you can control, in which case get off your butt and do it. Exactly. <laughs> well, we have a caller that just came on, and I think it's Peggy. Are you there? I am. Can you hear me okay? We can. Yay. Hi, Linda. Hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you? So what can hanging I in. <laughs> <laughs> so the question that I have, so how difficult is it to get the papers for the power of attorney, the living will, um, you know, the doctor's health thing, you know, paper to say, you know, it's okay if my daughter or my son or my mom can, you know, speak for me and if I'm incapacitated. Those are really easy to get, and um, depending on your state, you can download forms right off the internet, 
or you can do it with an attorney. If you have um, uh, if you have Legal Shield, I think they will actually do those documents for free. The healthcare proxy and the and the living will are part of the package, but they're very inexpensive. They're very easy to get. They're templates that most states have that are standard templates. They do need to be you know notarized if you're doing it that way, and uh, you know you're actually both parties would need to sign them so that you know mm-hmm. they're they're finding legal documents but once you have those documents in place it does give tremendous peace of mind yeah yeah and one thing i didn't realize before was that once you once the person dies you no longer have that power of attorney over them so that was something new that i didn't realize so thank you for right. that well, and that, can get frust- that can get frustrating, especially if you've been working with them, because at that point, you have to wait for the death certificate. Yeah. And then, you know, if you're the administrator or whatever of the, of, the, um, of, of the estate, then you can do those kinds of things. But it, it, the process can be very frustrating if you're not, a, if you're not on the doc, on the, especially I'm thinking banking, Peg, you've been in banking. If you're not on mm-hmm. the accounts with your, with your parents or your kids or whoever, um, it can be very frustrating um, because you can't get into the safe deposit box if you're not on it. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that it's that's wise protection, but it can be very frustrating. So exactly again, plan plan ahead, plan ahead. Um, thanks, Peg. I appreciate you being on the call today. Yeah, just had to hop on, say hi, and I did have a question, so that was good. Okay, well, that was good. I'm glad Perfect. we could answer it. We're going to bring on Dr. Tim McGinnis. Tim is the founder of SCARS, which is the Society of Citizens Against Relationship Scams. And Tim and I always love to chat about something you know, that's appropriate to the, to the guest. And Tim, are you there? I am here. And we were going to talk a little bit about you know, having records and, and scams and that kind of stuff. So can you give us a couple of minutes of your wise wisdom? Certainly. Thank you for having me on. Um, and just before we begin, remember that... Um, Visit our website, romancescamsnow.com, or our corporate website, againstscams.org, for more information about SCARS or to find help. Uh, One of the things that always comes up frequently when individuals are the victim of a scam actually deals with this very topic, which is documentation and records. Debbie, you, of course, understand the record keeping more than most in that you have about six feet of accumulated books bound <laughs> with your record. <laughs> True statement. <laughs> um, so, you know, whenever I, I come and visit Debbie and her family at her house, I, I see, you know, 47 feet of bound books on the wall documenting <laughs> uh, her experience as a scam victim. But regardless of the situation, the point that, that was brought up is documentation is critical for any eventuality whether it's any kind of a casualty, whether it's uh, an insurance claim, et cetera. And and by the way, I would just add one more thing to that. It's absolutely vital if you're going to make an insurance claim that you get an independent adjuster because that can be the difference between sanity and insanity in dealing with the insurance company. Because in many states, the, the insurance company is obligated to accept the claim made by the inju- made by the independent adjuster. So that's always worthwhile and usually very affordable. But when we're talking about crime, whether it's somebody who's engaged in vandalism on your house or whatever it may happen to be, record keeping is the critical difference between success and sanity and ultimate frustration. When someone is scammed or defrauded, whether it's by an email that they get in the ma- in, uh, from some scammer in Africa uh, saying that they've won something or that uh, there's a package that they have to claim and they click on a link, etc. Frequently what people will do will be to delete these critical messages so that the proof of the actual crime is gone. So it's very important to retain all documentation regardless of what you feel about that information because you don't know when you're going to need it. For example, you might get an email that says um, that you have a package on the way, and it might be a real package that a scammer is sending to you as part of a parcel scam. That you're then going to get that 
and then the scammer is going to want you to ship it to some other place, and they may even pay you for doing that. Well, that puts you in a position of being an accessory to a crime, and if you don't keep the, the emails, etc., that are associated with it, it's important. Now, a lot of times people will just delete them. They'll block the scammer, etc. We always recommend that if you feel that something unlawful is taking place or something that's sketchy, document it. Keep the emails. Keep records of uh, Facebook profiles, uh, web pages that you visited. Do what you need to do to record the, the facts associated with it. So if anybody does come knocking on your door, let me give you another example that happened to me personally. I was um, working for a large-scale government contractor, and the project that I was working on was terminated, so I was laid off. I applied for unemployment because I had no idea what was going to happen. Uh, within a short few weeks, I had another job working as a consultant with a financial institution, actually a mortgage company, as a, as a process uh, efficiency consultant. So two years go by, and a sheriff shows up at my door, and I'm actually arrested. And it turns out that what was the case was that my employer – misreported my start date. So from a state unemployment point of view, they saw me as starting when in fact it was the date of my interview. So I actually had not done anything wrong, and it took me a year to find the appropriate documentation and get witnesses to be able to corroborate this fact to get the case dismissed. But that's an example of where I was not careful at keeping records of interviews, start dates, uh, my first paycheck, uh, pay stub, things like that that could have easily solved the problem. Instead, I was at the mercy of a bureaucrat who simply went by some date entry in a system someplace to make my life living hell for a year. So it's vitally important whenever you're dealing with life's milestones, keep records, keep documents, and do as you suggest, which is keep physical copies, keep digital copies, and keep cloud copies. So that applies to scams. It applies to everything that goes on in life. So thank you for having me on, Debbie. Uh, happy to answer any questions if, if there are any. Otherwise, I'll return the, the call back to you. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, that's important, Tim. And I, I remember you telling me about that, that issue with, with your, the uh, employment stuff. And uh, it's really it's important. And, and I look in, in all of these, you say I've got all these binders. I have binders for everything. I, I am the binder queen. <laughs> uh, but I do keep I, it, you know, records from previous employments, even going back to the Air Force times. I have all the documentation. that, And I'm sure my kids are going to say, oh, I wish mom hadn't kept all this stuff. It's organized. It's in bins. It's all labeled. So if they don't need it someday, they can just kind of toss it or shred it or whatever. Um, but it's important. And I'm looking at my telephone, too. And, Linda, we were talking about getting an inventory taken. It's as simple as taking your phone and doing a video of your house. Exactly. And talking about your jewelry or talking about whatever, and then put that on a zip drive and keep that in your personal stuff. It's so easy. It just takes purposeful, mindful, doing, doing it time. Right? Exactly. Debbie? Yes, Tim. De can I add one thing to the statement that you just, you just made? Sure. Taking a video is great. But don't post it to your Facebook page. Oh, no, don't no. put it on a YouTube channel. <laughs> oh, no, no. Don't put it on Instagram. Otherwise, no. you've just invited every burglar in the neighborhood to know exactly what you've got. <laughs> That's good because you, you know, be people don't take pictures. People do this. They do. That is to Thank you for putting that out there. I would not have done that, but somebody will, you know. So, yes, take those pictures and put them away. Put them in your safe box. Put them in your ice box. Put them in your safe deposit box. Send them, you know, give a copy to your... And, and I would really even go so far as to say don't send that video to somebody over email. I, no. You know, I, I, I don't do anything on my phone because I'm more 
suspect of whether the phone is is going to um if somebody gets my phone if i lose my phone so i don't have any passwords on my phone i don't have any of that stuff on my phone so i it's like i i'm a little bit more paranoid about my phone but if you do a video with your phone for sure do not send it to somebody else on an email or a text or anything because that can be, as you said, a documentation to a thief to say, hmm, that looks interesting. <laughs> That's true. And, and be careful you know, who, who you let into your home, uh, especially now with everybody wearing masks. Thing. What's that? Can I add one more thing? Sure. Yes. Something you probably don't think about on a regular basis, but it's a good idea to have on your phone recent photos close-ups of, of your family members because the simple reality is you might be called upon in an emergency to provide a photograph of a family member, whether this is an elderly person or a child. And having good photographs, good front-on face photographs of someone can be very helpful if someone is temporarily missing or cannot be accounted for, and you need to involve the authorities. And this actually happens far more often than people think. This will happen at least once in the lifetime of every person. Wow. Well, that brings up another tip, and I just looked on my phone, is in your contact list, I have my ICE, my in case of emergency people. And when I Me type too. in ICE, I have my husband and my father. So mm-hmm. if, if you get one thing out of this call today that you can do right this minute is put I-C-E dash or space between, you know, on your contact that you want people to, to contact in case of emergency. It's the easiest thing is the one thing that we can all do right now. So, Miss Linda, it, the yes. hour has flown by. What I want to I do know, is it has. how can people get a hold of you or if they want to take a look at the crisis planner, the home planner, system, how can they find you? Well, one of the things I'd like to do is offer everybody in your audience a free planning roadmap that they can download as well as my most recent checklist for your disaster kit and for the ICE documents that you need to have, which are your in case of emergency documents, that you can start putting together your plan. And they can um, get those free downloads at the crisis planner home dot com, and then they'll also be able to get information about all the other things that I have, all my other books and my home system and everything else. But it'll really this roadmap is literally it's a roadmap. Most of us who are baby boomers know what a roadmap is. It folds like a roadmap when when you get the physical one, but the digital one. One side is a map, the other side is the points of interest, and it takes you through the eight steps of creating your plan. And then uh, the checklist will give you all the information you need to put all your documents together. So, and your and your emergency kit, which uh, June first starts hurricane season, and of course it, we're already up to B. I don't know how that happened. I mean, it's hurricane it happened season. yesterday, which uh, and they went, knocked it knocked the uh, the launch of the uh, the the uh, right. astronauts off yesterday. So and I right. know a friend of ours was supposed to be working with that. So everybody, set in your contacts, your ICE person now in case of emergency. Go to the crisisplannerhome.com and get Linda's free planning guide, the roadmap. It's a start, everybody. I want everybody just to make one one new thing today to get yourself on the road, off the road, or off the worry go round, and on the road to taking control and equilibrium in your lifetime, in your life. Linda, thank you so much. Dr. Tim, thank you so much. All of our, our our visitors that were on, please pass this around because this is important information that everybody needs to be planning for the future, but starting today because you don't know if you're going to have tomorrow. So I want to just say that this episode has been supported and sponsored by BenfoComplete.com, a vitamin supplement company that supports happy and healthy hands and feet. And thank you for listening to Stand Up and Speak Up. If you or anyone you know has been a victim to fraud or scam, have them report it to anyscam.com or the FBI's IC3.com. 
And then remember to join our Facebook group, Stand Up and Speak Up, because we have special information and replays of this show. And I want to wish everybody a safe and healthy and happy day, and come back and hear us again next Thursday. So thank you, Linda. Stay safe up in New York. And everybody that's on the show, have a great day. We appreciate you all. Thanks.